before I get started, um, Fez and I are very good friends. Um, <laughs> don't let his fancy graphics take away from what he's really trying to say. Did you know how, how many times he said, I think, and this is what I do, and I, this is what I prefer? Usually when you have words like that, it usually means that you don't have much to rely on. So let me actually show you what the real data is. I love you. Now, my talk is actually to show that it's, initially it was described as no different, the end-to-end, -end versus a side-to-side -side anastomosis. But, you know, if you think about it, when you're comparing two things, the first uh, bullet here is exactly what Feza actually tried to look at, and that was the end-to-end -end was actually better than a side-to-side, -side, okay? But in fact, I was actually given end-to-end -end is no different. But you know what? I'm actually going to go a little bit further. And I'm going to actually show that not only is it no different, but I'm going to actually show to you that the end-to-end -end is worse than a side-to-side. -side. And I have no problem doing that. Let me show you what the data is. So here's my debate. I'm going to say it's worse. And again, you've already seen this. Fez has already showed you some beautiful graphics. You can see I have these very little fancy graphics, but watch the data that I'm going to show about them. You can see the end-to-end -end on the left side, and on the right-hand side is the so-called side-to-side anastomosis. Now, who cares about this? I mean, surgeons, we care about this. We care about it in the surgical perspective because it influences or might potentially influence surgical morbidity, anastomotic leak rates, stenosis, things that you remember probably from your surgical residency and your potential, I'm sorry, your surgical uh, um, clerkship, maybe that you see periodically if you're in the operating room, obviously potentially OR time, length of hospital stay, pure surgical stuff. But it also has a significant or potential significant effect on what you as gastroenterologists do because it may affect overall recurrence rate or postoperative recurrence. And there's something unique about anastomosis in Crohn's disease that actually implies to you that the anastomosis is important. And let me give you an idea. When you do a total proctocolectomy and an endileostomy for Crohn's disease, the risk of recurrence is almost zero because you don't have an anastomosis. Something's unique about the anastomosis, so it implies, in fact, that it's probably pretty important. What's also unique about Crohn's disease is that when the disease recurs, it almost always recurs at the anastomosis. Again, implying that the anastomosis is important. And finally, not only does it occur at the anastomosis, but it occurs on the proximal side of the anastomosis, very uniquely. No one understands why that happens. But again, further evidence suggesting that the anastomosis you should care about as a gastroenterologist, what in fact is happening in the long term for the potential postoperative recurrence. Let's just look at early surgical outcomes. The potential advantages of side-to-side -side anastomosis is that there's better blood flow because you don't have a lot of stitching right along the staple, right along the um, uh, stitch line. It's faster to perform, and there's a wider luminal diameter than you have in end-to-end -end anastomosis because these are long, either 55 or 75 or even 100 millimeter staple lines, and therefore all of these uh, things swell postoperatively. And you can imagine if you had a narrow anastomosis that you hand sewn and it swelled, you could potentially think there'd be more small bowel obstruction as opposed to a side-to-side -side where, the, where the, uh, uh, the anastomotic line, if you'd like, is longer. But what are the potential advantages of Fez's anastomosis? Well, the bowel line is often thick and sometimes it doesn't staple well. I will concede that. Staple lines may bleed because you don't have a stitch that you're actually making sure that actually the anastomosis is not going to bleed. And clearly it's less expensive. There's no question that sutures are less expensive than staplers. So what does the data show? Like, What's up there? Well, let me look at uh, the CAST study, Dr. McLeod's study, which actually Fez very conveniently forgot to actually put this in. And if you actually look, this is the side-to-side -side column, STSA. The ETA is, is the end-to-end -end anastomosis. And why don't you look at the little stars here? Look at the time to complete the anastomosis, 15 minutes, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in the operating room at $1,000 or more an hour, that's a lot of money. Plus, we as surgeons like that because it's just faster. Look at the star here, the mean duration of the operation. You save about 25 minutes by actually doing this. That's a significant amount of time as well. The thing that's interesting, though, is the mean hospital stay was actually longer than the side-to-side. -side. I'm not exactly sure why that was the case, but that is a clearly a potential downside of using this. Now, what about the real uh, uh, analysis? And that is to try to get some meta-analyses. Now, what Feza showed, what Dr. Ramsey showed you, was one study. But what about actually some of the other studies? Well, this is actually, a, for those of you who don't know, this is a forest plot. And this is looking at the overall complication rate after stapled anastomosis here versus hand and sewn anastomosis. And if you look at the odds ratio, this side fa favors stapled, this side favors hand sewn. And you can see the overall complication rate here 
actually favors the staple of anastomosis. The anastomotic leaks were at 0.05. They were almost statistically significant, but potentially if you would have had more patients, it actually would have been statistically significant. And the co other complications, however, after the anastomotic leak were not significant. But this data right here, you guys just like, if you want to just make it very simplistic and look at a p-value, the p-value was statistically significant in favor of a side-to-side -side anastomosis for both intraoperative and postoperative outcomes. This is not my data. This is actually published data meta-analysis. And does it apply to other diseases? We've talked about Crohn's disease. What about in cancer? This is actually just in cancer uh, uh, surgery, but you can see in cancer operations, look at the anastomotic, this is the overall anastomotic leak rate, again, favoring stapled anastomosis. Look at the p-value again, 0 0.01, okay? And also the clinical anastomotic leak was also statistically significant. So it's not only for Crohn's disease that stapled anastomosis seems to be better, but also for other diseases. Now, what about the long-term issues, the things that you guys and gals are interested in? The side-to-side -side advantages for postoperative recurrence might be that there's a wider luminal diameter. That might reduce stasis of the bacteria. There are theories that the reason that you get anastomotic recurrence is that the bacteria sits there because of relative stasis or stenosis around the anastomosis. No one understands that, as I mentioned very well. Better blood flow potentially might improve local ischemia. People think that by stitching the anastomosis itself, it causes local ischemia, and that's the reason why you get anastomotic recurrence. Longer anastomotic length, which you get in a stapled anastomosis, may improve symptom control, even with disease recurrence, because the length that you actually have of communication between the, the ileum and the colon is much longer. So that might be actually something advantageous. And there's these theoretical concepts that increase space between the true colonic and ileal lumens, because there's some issues regarding colonic spillage into the, into the small bowel, which might be associated with recurrence. It's possible because there's a longer distance between the two, that in fact that might potentially be advantageous in the side-to-side -side anastomosis in terms of postoperative recurrence. Well, what's the data? Well, this is the data actually also from the CAST study, and this is one of the few things that I think Fez and I are going to agree on, is that there was no difference, statistically at least, between patients who got endoscopic recurrence and symptomatic recurrence in patients who had end-to-end -end or side-to-side -side anastomoses. But what he also conveniently did not show you is that there's another randomized trial that's actually looked at this particular issue, okay? This is a study that was actually published about 15, 14 years ago, and they randomized patients to an end-to-end -end anastomosis versus a side-to-side -side in Crohn's disease, and you can see here that the re percent of reoperation, surgical recurrence, in patients who had end-to-end -end anastomosis was at least double that of the side-to-side. -side. This is another level, piece of level one evidence that suggests that the side-to-side -side anastomosis is in fact not only uh, equivalent, but it's actually better than an end-to-end. -end. And let's look at some more level one evidence, meta-analyses. Look at the post-operative recurrence over here. This is actually looking at all the data that's, uh, uh, together. Again, side-to-side -side here, end-to-end -end here. This could be the odds ratio in the forest plot. This actually favors side-to-side -side anastomosis. Look at that p-value. That's a pretty good, for those of you who don't see, it's 0 .00, 0 0.002, excuse me. That's actually very good data. And this is overall recurrence, and this is surgical recurrence, you can see. Again, even higher statistical significance, at least in favoring side-to-side -side anastomoses. So in summary, and let me just give you what's there, because this is level one evidence, and I don't think I use the word think, or I believe, or I prefer my entire lecture. You know, compared to a side-to-side -side anastomosis, a side-to-side, -side, uh, compared to an end -to end anastomosis, excuse me, a side-to-side -side anastomosis is associated with better intraoperative variables, early, better early postoperative outcomes, and appears, although not 100% sure about this, the potential for long-term disease recurrence. And therefore, it is my belief that a side-to-side -side anastomosis is actually better than an end-to-end -end anastomosis. Thank you.